Oh, where, oh, where has my Kenny cat gone? Oh, where, oh, where can he be? What's going on, y'all? Thank you very much for tuning in to my YouTube channel. Without further ado, I'll just jump straight into it because I know I have been gone for quite some time, and my apologies. I took the entire week, an entire week, took the entire month of November off to go home and visit family in Chicago. I hadn't seen a lot of my immediate family in well over two and a half, close to three years, so it was great to take some time away, and obviously, me being an advertising professional, this is the busiest time of the year. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the one thing that I've been working on to improve my ball strike dramatically. So without further ado, let's do it right now. One of the big things that I have been working on with my coach is getting into a good impact location. So what I am noticing in a lot of my uh, full swings and in slow motion video is we've worked really hard to get a good grip, right? While my grip and everything is coming along pretty well and we get into a good transition and we get into a good rotation here, what happens is I tend to release the club early, right? So on the downswing, what will happen is my lower body will start to move and then we'll get to that position that's like right here, right? Where the club is parallel to the ground and my arm on average in my hands tend to be uh, behind my right hip. Now, ideally, uh, I would want this position to be more like this. Once the club gets down to this point, it's gonna release. What tends to happen is I release a little too early Right, and I'm getting not enough uh, shaft lean um, and impact, and I'm releasing a little bit early in my swing, which is causing you know me to not have consistent face control, consistent loft, which is going to impact my ability to control distance. There's two training aids that I like to use for this. Or actually, there's really just one training aid, and it's a little thing you may have seen that people put like a. Uh, uh, a yardstick that's on the end of the club. I just use this little thing, it's from Callaway. Now, this works well because it's hard to like have this club flipping because it's not here. So you can really work on some of these, you know, some of these shots really easily. So I like to get into a little position here, then look at it on the camera, make sure it looks like what I expect it to look like, and just feel like I'm holding that and releasing it all the way out here. And just double checking what that looks and what that feels like on camera and making sure I'm getting closer and closer. That felt good. All right, got my little generic mat down here, right? Just a little eBay mat, and then I've got that. I believe these are are Champkey, right? You can buy those on uh, you can buy those on eBay or whatever have your Amazon, right? And I've got this little setup here that is basically just an alignment stick, and it helps me understand that I'm that I'm square to my target line. And there's another alignment stick that's set up right in front of it, and that's the setup that I use in order to make sure that I'm set up in the same way, set up consistently, and everything I'm looking at is pretty much the same, right? When I go to play golf, I look at my shot the exact same. I look at my start line, I look at my target line, like I'm just using the same setup that I visualize when I'm out on the course so that this practice can transfer and that I can get these skills to transfer over to uh, when I'm actually playing shots on the golf course. And one of the good benefits about this, again, is that I noticed that when I consistently work on just this little short drill, it really helps me out on the golf course. I notice my strike gets better and better. Even though it's not exactly where I want it to be yet, it still gets better and better just even working with this. I just try my best to like really recreate that feeling at speed. Oh, much better. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get back to practicing here and then we'll wrap this video up in another segment. If those of you aren't aware of where I do those line drills or where they came from, I'll put a link in the description above or a link up here and then also below. It's basically helping me understand how my dispersion is changing with the things that I'm working on in my swing. It's not my own. It's Chris Zambri. He used to be the head coach at uh, USC for the men's golf team. I'll put a link in the description above on the video I show of how to do that test at home.
All right, and we are now back home. Of course, I'm doing this to catch up on when this was filmed, which I think was probably back towards the beginning of November, but neither here nor there. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my tablet and we're gonna take a look at what those results were. Something totally went wrong. Tap to retry, lovely. How are y'all doing down that lens? Did you have a good Christmas? Did you get all the gifts you wanted? I'd love to hear from you all down that lens. What'd you get for Christmas? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear some of those good gift ideas out there. We're gonna take a look at the top view and we're gonna go ahead and look at groupings for all clubs. And as we can see from this, my dispersion is very tight, even though during this test, I was having a pretty big pull draw. In some cases, I was hitting shots about 20 yards left of where I was aligned. But I often feel that's how golf works sometimes. You improve one thing and unfortunately, because everything is not equal, something else on the, uh, the needle moves. So because I'm getting the face more close and getting the ball struck a little bit better. My dispersion is tighter, but uh, my path and everything is just shifted a little bit left, which means that I'm hitting pull draws. Totally okay. I've played with, you know, worse shot shapes, but if you know you're going to hit a pull draw, just aim for what your miss is, right? Um, and then, you know, work on it with your instructor later on what you can do to neutralize uh, that path a little bit. I feel very confident out there on the course that I can pretty much hit uh, anything from 150 yards in on inside of a, you know, a 20 yard window, which is going to be about the size of most greens. All right, as we get into Arcos, we're just gonna jump straight over to approach, look at the last 20 rounds, and as we can see, compared to a scratch golfer, I'm losing about three shots, but that's up 1.2 shots over the last 20 rounds, which means I am trending up and to the right. You're improving, yay! Um, and as we look at it, my strokes gained is still a little bit below a scratch golfer in pretty much every discipline, um, but my greens and regulations are improving uh, as we're getting there. I love these new features in Arcos, which we will definitely jump into. Like these are some of the coolest things. Oh, you can see it on my screen because I'm showing it. These are some of the coolest features on uh, Arcos they've done with the new green and regulation pro uh, pro proximity. Some of the greatest stuff. Obviously, my proximity could be a lot tighter as we get into the sub 150 range, but over 150 yards, doing pretty good compared to a scratch golfer. And as we look at our greens and regulation, about 44% greens and regulation, we'd obviously like to be hitting a lot more. But as we can see, on all approaches, we're still just a little bit outside that window of getting the ball as close to the hole as possible on our misses, which is a result of obviously strike and then some of those directionally left misses. But we are starting to move the needle of hitting more shots to the center of the green, only leaving about 27% of them short, obviously 14% of them going left, which is what we'd expect because I'm hitting a bit of a pull draw at this point in time. So Basically a long-winded way of saying that working on these changes and getting into a better impact position is definitely improving my ability to hit more greens. But I would love to hear from some of you all down that lens. What are gonna be the biggest things you're gonna be working on next year moving into 2023? What are some of your golf resolutions for the new year? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, thank you very much for watching my YouTube channel. Deuces, people, right there. Let's keep it moving.